with more than a million new species of plankton. Yes, they'll reveal their findings at London's Science Museum today. Those plankton may be only very, very little, but they're also very important for all of us. Jenny Hill can tell us why. She's at St. Catherine Docks in East London. Morning, Jenny. Good morning, Bill. From the deck of the Tara, this is a 100 and foot long schooner and scientists spent two and a half years on board this extraordinary research vessel. What they discovered was an astonishing new invisible world. Out of the deep, these dazzling discoveries, you're looking at plankton, microscopic plants and animals that drift through our seas and oceans. They may be small, but they're vital produce the oxygen in every second breath that we breathe. Um, they take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. They're at the base of the food chain, so that if there's no plankton, there are no fish in the oceans. All kinds of things that we have to understand more about to understand how the ocean works. Well, this is the Tara, moored up now after a two and a half year voyage of discovery all over the world. The aim, in the words of the scientists on board, to take the pulse of the planet. What they found surprised them all. Scientists thought there were 30,000 different plankton species out there. In fact, there are a million and a half. We always thought that ocean biodiversity is a lot lower than, than di diversity on the land, but knowing now that there's something like one and a half million basically brings the biodiversity in the ocean up to a similar level to the biodiversity on land, in the forests, and so on. The team collected tens of thousands of samples. They're still being analysed. Among the strangest, this, the siphonophore. Technically, it's a colony of plankton, but it can grow up to 40 metres long, and that makes it the world's longest creature. Perhaps, though, the real treasures here are the images collected by the ship's microscopic cameras. They reveal a whole new underwater world. These strange sea creatures, scientists say, can teach us much about life. Well, as you can see, we've come inside. This is the communications room, and uh, this here is the main living area on board this research vessel, the Tara. Let me introduce you to one of the scientific coordinators of the project. You saw him there in the report. This is uh, Chris. Good morning to you. Chris, first of all, in addition to the, the really exciting discoveries of the plankton, you found some slightly more alarming things too, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. We're also sampling for plastic in the surface waters uh, in every sampling station that we sample around the world. And um, particularly with alarming was what we found in Antarctica in the Southern Ocean. Uh, where trawling for plastic, we found you know, considerable levels. Um, something like the order of uh, t several tens of thousands of tiny plastic particles per kilometre, per come square from? kilometre. Where does that come from? It's coming from all sorts of places, you know, some of it is old fishing debris and things like that, but a lot of it is just coming from garbage, just degraded plastic bags and other sorts of plastic, textiles particularly. Well, there's all sorts of plastic in our clothing these days, and it just gets out with the washing machine uh, and into the ocean. Okay, well, disturbing stuff, but thank you very much for telling us about your, uh, your voyage, Chris. Um, just about it here from the Tara for the time being, but here's an interesting piece of plankton trivia for you. Did you know that plankton can all clump together and form these kind of blooms, which apparently can be seen from space? They're so large. Fascinating stuff. We'll be back here on Breakfast a little later this morning. That's what you call blooming marvellous. All right, thanks.